It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, welcome back to Mike Patey. Scrappy Cub, Scrappy the Cub built with spare parts. People, some people are calling it, we should call it Scratchy Cub, because it's scratch build. So it actually kind of makes sense, but this is scrappy. A lot of scrap parts and a lot of scratch build parts. But what we're gonna do today on this video is we're gonna quickly get an engine stand to help me hang a motor on the front because Ron is gone and I'm working by myself and uh, I need to be able to tip it, lean it right, left. But for those of you who are just joining along, I've never watched one of my videos, I like to build wild aircraft. Right now, this Cub, we've got some trophy truck style suspension on it. What we're throwing on it today is a 13 liter, 780 cubic inch Lycoming custom motor built for racing into a backcountry bush plane. So I need to get it mounted to the front, make a few adjustments, and then we're gonna get onto some more things. We're almost caught up with all the videos to where we are today. This video is just a little bit behind, but we're gonna get to the new videos real soon. So today, let's get a motor hung and get back to work. All right, guys, I'm done. I thought it was gonna be like an hour and a half, two hour project. I think I'm in it probably three hours straight. Um, it's now resting on the stand. And what's really cool about this is I can pick with my crane, slide it into place, get it really close to position, set the whole engine down, and then Scrappy is also on a crane and I can slide it forward. now. Scrappy's really short right now. I've got about eight inches out of the suspension, so I've, I've got a way squatted down just to get it at a height that can work out real easy. Um, so this, I think, is a good height. So I'll pick up the whole engine and my setting cage. I don't know what to call that. My motor mount jig adjuster thing. <laughs> anyway, so I'll lift the whole thing up. Position it really close. I can move Scrappy. Scrappy can go up and down. This can go up and down. And then I can move any of the jacks. I can get my down and right, my degrees of angle of, of offset to counteract the torque uh, of the engine in flight. So I've got all that calculated. I know exactly what I'm gonna do, but 
Give me a few minutes, I'll get it positioned over there. I'm gonna slide this up, get an idea, move it out of the way. Now I won't have to have it hanging from the top. I can lower this down to ground height, put all my accessories on it, get it all completely ready to go, pick it out of its cage, do one more weight and balance on the engine with every single component on it, right down to every pressure switch. I'll do a new uh, center of mass check and weight with the prop hub flywheel I still need to get on. I'm machining that. Um, I'll get that done and the engine done, and then I'll just pair the weight and balance and adjust the motor mount. Perfect. With upholstery and all done. So, ah, let's get to work. All right. So I did something really simple for my stand. I still want to be able to use this. It has a little bit of a leaky ram, but I can still use it. It takes days to leak down, but I can put a brace in it if I have to. But I still want to be able to use this, so I don't know if you noticed in my all my fast time-lapse stuff, but I put a pipe and this pipe slides over that pipe. So this whole upper assembly just lifts off. My jacks can pivot sideways. It will drop the frame back down onto its wheels. Put four bolts back in, and I still have a usable lift, hoist. So I'll probably keep this contraption around. Aircraft number 14 right here. I'm sure I got more to come, and I'm really excited. I finally went and quickly slammed out this little adjuster for setting my motors whenever I build a motor mount, so I'm pretty pumped. You can see right now, I can uh, go forward and back. The cowling I'm gonna put on it, hold on. <laughs> is this one. So it's a Karma Cub EX3 cowling. It's been getting dirty. Um, this will go on the bottom. Of course, none of this will fit right now, but I'll fix it. I've gotta change the intake a bit. I'm gonna let a lot more air in. So I've gotta change the width because I widened the entire plane. Scrap is a lot wider, so. I'm gonna cut this and this, all the pieces, make a mold out of it and build something that looks a lot like a Carbon Cut VX3. It's one of my all-time favorite planes and this has a lot of EX3 in it. So a whole frame and another rec frame that I all put together. So I wanna keep that look. Anyway, you can see it's gonna be really easy to move the plane around. If I wanna move the plane, forward, back, up, down, lean, right, left, or the engine, I'm gonna be able to do that, so. I'm excited. <laughs> hey guys, so, I failed. <laughs> I tried really hard not to do any more work on my little stand for lifting motors, and I was supposed to be working on Scrappy, but I kept looking at it, it's so ugly. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, I had to paint it. Now I'm all covered in red, and uh, I lost two more hours of build time. So <laughs> what was supposed to be like a two to three hour job, I'm now five hours in, and uh, I don't have any help today. I got uh, my best friend Ron, he's the one that gives me a hand. He needs time off now and then, so he's at the lake. I'm building stuff. I don't know if it's worth it for the one build because I could have been a long ways on my motor mount right now, but this is build number 14. So aircraft build number 15, the extra time I put in it will be absolutely worth it. So <laughs> thumbs up, I'm done working on this silly jack. Let's get back to work on Scrappy. <laughs> and there's Ron with the camera. <laughs> hey guys. All right, so the firewall is uh, looking like a big wrinkly mess, <laughs> as it should. I put down some foil, some duct tape, just to protect the fact that everything's done on that firewall. And I'm getting ready to pair the motor to Scrappy. <laughs> I'm finally putting the motor on Scrappy. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna build the last motor mount. Um, the motor mount on here is done. The attach point is done, but I need to make the bars connect. And the reason I waited till now, is I've done the calculations on weight and balance over and over and over from the very initial design, and then cross-checking it along the way 
So I can't even tell you how many times I've done weight and balance checks because so much of it was done with math on every component without an actual airplane, then building it and watching it along the way. And it stayed right in line, plus or minus, just, just a tiny bit all the way as I built until I made a huge change. And I'm really glad I did it. So um, those of you who asked, I get a lot of this question. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'll tell you. Um, if I design this at first and build exactly as designed, or do I kind of just make it up as I go? It's a great question. Mostly, I'd say 95% is original concept all the way through. And then as I go, I tweak a little, but this is the plane I had in my head from day one, and it's mostly the same, but I had a huge design change that made a massive weight and balance shift because of where I located, and that was my parachute. I wasn't gonna do a parachute, and it's at the, it's behind in the baggage area, and it took up the weight of what would normally be my baggage. So to fix it, the motor had to come forward. Thank goodness, it was a huge benefit because the motor was actually tucked so tight to the airframe that to work on it was really tight. Now with 100 pounds back, the motor has to come forward, I get a lot more room behind the engine. It's gonna be like working on a conventional aircraft, really clean, really simple, maybe even be easier in some ways. So I get to make that adjustment. The interior's in scrappy, my seats are in scrappy, the panel's in. I've even got fuel in my fuel tank. The oil cooler in the back is filled with oil. The oil lines are filled. Everything is pumped full. I get a new weight and balance. There is nothing left to do back here but the wings and I have their moment and their weights. So like the build estimated off of the original design, but everything's holding pretty true. So now I get to make my last final adjustment, redo the weight and balance and adjust that engine, just whatever little bit it needs to, to get it exact. Now, kind of give you an idea, this engine moved 30 some, just over 30 inches back from an original location to make this all work. And now we're just moving it forward a little bit. So to make up for the parachute. Hope that all makes sense. All right, I wanna say, uh, what am I doing right now on the engine? I got a couple left, little things left to do before I can weigh it one last time. I'm gonna throw the prop back on it. Um, I took off every accessory and just decided to send it off to get it serviced, overhauled, even though they were low time. Like my BNC alternator, my BNC lightweight featherweight starter, it's a really high power starter that can crank over even this eight cylinder high compression engine. Um, I got a BNC secondary alternator back here. Uh, I sent those off a couple of weeks ago. They turned them right around. It showed back up before I was even ready for them. So thank you BNC. I've been using their product forever. I love those guys. Thank you guys for rushing that for me. I even got it done sooner than I needed. So I got all new overhauled accessories on it. I did the same with my throttle assembly. So Airflow Performance, Don did this for me. Um, I got, a, I sent him back my other one, which was in pretty, was actually fairly new, had 200 and some odd hours on it. And Don sent me back a new improved version. So Don, thank you. I, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't have expected this and it's really, really awesome. So. I've used his products on so many of my engines. So I've got a brand new one for my scrappy plane. So <laughs> I like it. Anyway, I've also done my mechanical fuel pump. I've got two electrical in the back, plus a gear driven mechanical one. So all my accessories are fresh and I'm ready to do, I need to put those on, do one more weight balance on the engine. I'll set it up. I got a pivot bar that I can rotate and slide it back and forth. That center mass is gonna be with between here and here, I've got it marked. I'm gonna be within a quarter inch, um, but I'll do that one more time. Then motor mount. Holy crap, it's a lot of talking. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking and get back to work.
This is officially the location of the engine on Scrappy. Okay guys, sorry it's so noisy. I don't have a mic. I tried one, kept breaking on me and then I'd have to re-record or actually we just lost a lot of footage because I didn't know it didn't record. So I'm just gonna yell. Why why are you yelling at me? I'm finally done. My motor mount. Um it took me about a half a day yesterday and a good part of today. So uh, I would have had it done a lot sooner, but I had a full day of work to do first, but Two days, maybe a day's total real work, but it's done. I'm gonna paint it, get it on the plane. The engine's gonna go on permanent. <laughs> Ron with the camera always. Hey guys, I'm done. <laughs> so, it's just a motor mount, but I am so pumped because that means the motor's going on scrappy. So I did a couple of things different with this motor mount. What can I tell you about it? So let me turn it the direction it goes. You can see everywhere I have bars. I wanted every one of them to have some kind of a lean to it. It helps triangulate the motor mount so it doesn't move. Then I have, of course, the typical main tri triangle support that is done on all motor mounts with a couple extra. So. I always had this concern, if that motor mount broke or failed, and the motor comes off the front of the plane, you die. Like, I, I don't care how great of a pilot you are, you could be the greatest pilot of all time. And if you lose that mass moment, the weight in that location off the front of the aircraft, that tail is gonna swing out from underneath you, you're going for a long ride down. And it's, the worst thing you could do is lose the motor. So I thought, what can I do to make sure that my motor mounts never come off? And one of them is a really simple thing I started to do a while back. It takes a little more work, but instead of the motor mount bars coming straight out where you bolt it to the firewall, I tipped them on angles, pretty steep angles, out and away from each other. And on the bolts that are at the firewall, they're going all four directions. So what you do is you insert the bolt on one side of the motor mount has to go through the firewall and then to the motor mount in a nut. On the other side, it goes from the engine side back into the airframe, so the nuts, the bolts change directions. The purpose of that and the heavy steep angles is so that if I put all the bolts in, you actually have to put the motor mount tight and then slide the bolts in. The bolts are tapered like this and like this. If I had the, the nuts vibrate off, Heaven forbid that that would never happen anyway. But if it did, and the bolts are all tipped, gravity holds the bolt in location and vibration keeps it wanting to stay in location, coming through this way. And then the, the other motor mounts at the angles the opposite direction, the bolt has to return the other way and the nut goes on the opposite side so that vibration keeps the bolts in. Go one step further than that, by a heavy steep angle, 
if you've got one angle tipping one way and one another, the motor mount, if it wanted to come off, you'd have to drag the motor mount 45 degree angle or 30 degree angle one direction, which is opposing the bolt on the other side. Which means, if you slide the motor mount to the firewall, you slide all the bolts in the correct direction, you could never put a nut on it, grab the motor mount, and it can't come off the aircraft under any circumstance, and gravity and vibration keeps the bolts in place. Kind of might be a waste of time, but it's easy, it's free. It didn't cost anything, it didn't cost weight, it didn't cost material, just a little more time, but an, another added layer of safety. The next thing I did, most motor mounts only have four bolt locations. Some heavier, bigger motors might go to six firewall mount locations. This has eight locations. So I've got the tr primary frame, secondary frame, the backup. I am holding a monster motor on here. And quite frankly, we're gonna be putting it through its paces in some pretty rough country. Scrappy's built because I wanna go land in some places where there's some ruts and bumps and some things that might normally send a plane for a loop. So um, I don't wanna push it too far, but I wanna make the plane safe enough to handle more than I wanna throw at it. So I needed the motor mount to match. I wasn't really happy with my welds. Not everything goes perfect. I had some really tight areas where I was tacking it together with the MIG. Uh, burned it out after that with the TIG. But um, some really difficult spots uh, while I was doing it that uh, the welds were less than ideal. <laughs> I sucked at a couple of them. Not my best work, but it turned out good. So <laughs> I won't belabor that nonsense. Let's get this on the airplane, get back to work. All right, guys, I hope you liked that video. I've got a lot more coming. So you've seen me drop the back of the plane. I've still got to drop the front of the plane. I've got to build the cowling system. I've got to do a flap design. Of course, we've got wings, but that's after cowling drop. And I also need to up some more horsepower because 500 just isn't enough. So we got a lot more videos to come. I hope you like, subscribe if you haven't, come back, watch me build some madness that is scrappy. A bush plane, we're gonna go up, get it airborne as quick as we can. Thank you all of you for following along. We'll see you soon. This is a silly little tip trick. Some of you may have seen it, I'm not sure. Um, one day I couldn't get a nut to stay in a long deep socket and I needed to use that deep socket to get it down in a hole, but the nut would drop clear down the length of the socket. So if you get a piece of blue tape, any tape, wrap it about one and a half times. You hold it like that, take the deep socket and then squeeze it in nice and tight and then it holds it for you. And you can push it in and work it and spin it without the nut going clear inside. So I use it all the time. Also, sometimes I use it on the opposite. I need to get a nut out of a hole and I'll reach down, put a little piece of tape on it. Then I can undo it. And when I bring the socket out, the nut stays with the socket and I don't have it drop down in the engine somewhere. So silly tip, let's get back to work.